Okay, we have got the InMotion V8. Now, it's not brand, brand new. It's a fairly new model, uh, but it's been out for some, some months. Uh, we tend to stock stuff that we thoroughly investigate um, and then can back up with spare parts and the like. So it takes us some time to get through the brands. But anyway, we're on to the InMotion stuff now. <laughs> Uh, V8. So this is the the big boy of the Emotion range, electric unicycles. Uh, got a manual inside. Uh, it's got a trolley handle built in. It's a 16-inch wheel. It's got a headlight. You can connect it to Bluetooth through the app. Um, a brake light. It's got loads of handy little features on it, which make it really, really good and thought-provoking. It's also their quality control is supposedly excellent uh, so it's on par with the nine bot sort of output so the build and the qc is spot on it's not the fastest one out there but it is a pretty tasty so let's have a look what's actually in the box so there's that manual you've got your charging block uk spec cable on this one and pads that you can stick onto the side if you wish to Charger blocks just like any other charger block really on the market. 84 volt, 1.5 amps output. Okay, let's take her out. Oh, look at that. What a lovely looking machine. It's certainly got looks going for it. It's got a nice red finish around there, a little trim there. Ooh, is it, is it Windows? Look at that, already connected with Bluetooth. My phone's already set up with it. Um, you pick it up, it's got a cut off, so it's got a switch built onto the handle, doesn't spin, which is pretty neat. Relevels, no beep to let you know it's re-leveled, but you can feel it anyway. Uh, you've got the trolley handle here, so if you want to pull this thing around, wheel it around in the tube station, whatever, there it is. Very simple use. Oh, first of all, let's pick this up. Max 65 PSI. That's a 16 by 2.125. Who's interested? And it's got a fairly um, sort of a cross purpose tread on it by the looks. Oh. Wow, okay. Oh. Okay, well, this is higher up the leg. The plastic here is higher up the leg than. Well, the other ones, and it always comes down to conditioning. You watch any of the videos I do, it's all about conditioning. But this feels very solid. Very nice firmware. Wow. Okay. Woo! Right, let's take it for a little spin, shall we? Let's take it down there. One thing I immediately like about it is you've got a battery reader, which is you just look down, just look down, see the battery. No hassle. It just gives you the stat there and there. You actually got a neat little, you might be able to see that on the camera, little graphic there going on, flying around the battery. But this is, um, it feels very, very, very nice. Um, so if you were looking at a 9.1P previously before they stopped doing it, this fills that category easily, um, and, and more, um, as we will see through this testing. So front headlight, uh, nice speed, real nice speed on it, through that way inclined, so plenty of power, um, but with a trolley handle built in as well. I'm liking this so far. Okay, we're just coming to put it on charge, um, and if you want to get the front light on, just press and hold. And the light comes on. You get a nice little sound to let you know. Press and hold again, it'll go off. That's pretty neat, isn't it? Easy as that. And you can do it with the app as well. Uh, charge port is here. So you just put that bit of rubber there. And there it is. Um, getting dusty already. I've been about 200 metres. <laughs> Covered in dust. But there we go. There's a speaker um, at the back. So that's pretty, pretty neat. Right, let's get this thing on charge. This is almost fully charged, but let's get it right up. As with most of these uh, charging blocks, red means charging, green means charged, and no light means not working or not plugged in. And there it is, plugged in.
Easy as that, just slide it in, job done. Okay, here we are out in a bit of a bigger area. We're gonna give it a go. Look at this. There's plenty of power. <coughs> 800 watts of power. Really solid. Plenty of braking power. Real, real stable. Once you stood up right on it, it feels really solid. So I'm actually digging into my legs that much. Very, very, very manageable. Feels good. I think the next thing really is to do um is to do a range test on it. So we'll get it fully charged up. Have a mess about it a bit more around here. Get it fully charged up. If I want to turn the light on. Lovely. It gets a bit dark. Anything up on the back or is it the same? Same. Lovely. All good. Okay, let's hand this over to the Tobester. Right. Don't pull on that handle, because if you pull on the handle, it shuts off the motor. Okay. Don't drop it. <laughs> Easy as that, is it? What's that like? No cushions to support you? Yeah. It, it's, yeah, it's good. It's quite smooth. Yeah, quite smooth. Yeah, it's quite smooth, eh? Quite smooth, eh? And That's your verdict, is it? Um, yeah, when you stand on it, it's fine, but then the sides are just aching my feet. Ah, because like you've got smaller legs, yeah. they're digging into the higher up almost so just, just by your knee. Probably more for adults, I would say. So. More for adults, he says. I think he might be right with the power and the speed that thing's got. Teenagers, might be able to Teenagers as well, yeah. Ooh. Not too this quick. Is the this is the part where I learned to ride. You did. This is where you learned to ride your first nine bot a couple of years ago, wasn't it? I'm now going to try this steep slope to see where how this handles, or if indeed it does handle. Oh, easy. Easy, cake. Let's try it down for the sake of the test. So quite a lot of pressure on it to try and break you to stop you running away. Doesn't feel like struggling at all. No feet. Nothing. Okay. Well that works well. That's all good. Give him round of claws. This is a massive hill. I'm gonna try it. Ah, has it got the power? Whoa! On my toes. It has. I'm gonna try and come down it now. A reverse test. Woo! Easy. Absolutely easy. No stress, no beeps, nothing. Sweet! Okay, I'm out testing the light and it is nice and bright. Let's see exactly where you're going. Seal stuff coming up. Plenty bright enough. One thing not to do is to pull this charge flap off uh, too hard because it actually just falls off and then getting it back in slotted into the casing is a monumental task and I still haven't done it properly um, probably a knack to doing it um, but that's the best I've got is that so it doesn't sit flush but more time I will be able to force it back into that little hole in there I think hopefully I was having a quick look at the application and I noticed that you've got within your stats so you log into the machine the first thing I notice is when the machine is charging or not charging, plugged into power, more to the point, you can actually connect to it um, when it's essentially off. So what I mean is the machine's off, you plug it into the charger and don't power it on, just plug it into the charger, it then connects, it makes a noise. I know this because the machine kept going do 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 every time the phone was connecting and disconnecting as it moved further and closer. Okay, we're leaving. Um, for some reason, it's winter in the middle of summer, but never mind. My coat's at work, didn't expect to have it. So I'm just gonna do a distance test now. That's all this is, is to see how far this will go on a single charge. Okay, we are two miles in. Bruce is starting to feel it. Um, 
it's got a nice loud alarm when it's you get to max speed and tilt back uh, it's quite abrupt the tilt back my feet are absolutely aching again it's conditioning totally conditioning uh, it's different with every unicycle <laughs> and where the leg supports sit on your legs as well um, that needs conditioning as well but two miles in a oh, dark and overcast day okay three miles in one thing I've noticed if I take my right foot off you get a rubbing noise on the inside of that casing which is just because it's so tightly you know, tightly built it's just that little bit of bend lifting my heel off look is enough to make it rub that tire which is you know as long as not riding one leg is right and you can kind of hear it's still rubbing a little bit now well, I can. <laughs> Don't know whether you can. Okay, something's quite good. Shuts off the motor when you pick it up. I like that. Get it high curbs without having to jump it. All good. We're about five miles in. Okay, we are five and a half miles in and 67% battery, I think it is. Okay, and back off out again. Oh, on the stairs, ideal. But this is the next half now, so then five and a half miles already. Back out again, and it's looking a lot sunnier. Okay, I am about just over seven miles in, and I've gone down to, can you see that is the question, gone down to yellow and red and it's saying 27 percent battery um, but i've just come off a massive climb so probably not that surprising i should imagine that will bounce back up again hope so otherwise i might be stuck hopefully so um, but we will see Okay, we're almost nine miles in. Got something a bit stuck in there. I can hear it crunching its way around. Uh, currently riding, trying some of the off-road stuff now. So um, I need to find a stick or something and see if I can tease whatever's stuck here out. Uh, let's have another look. Just boot her down. Oh, battery's recovered a little bit, like I said. Um, let's try and tease this out and then we'll carry on. One thing to remember if tipping it up to have a look what's on the inside. Uh, the power button on the handle <laughs> it has booted up twice on me now um yeah Woo! right part of the problem well there's a leaf stuck in there anyway by the way um i couldn't actually get it out it seems to have broken up now um but that gap between there and the tire you can soon get so the mud's come off it now because it spun around uh, when i wasn't expecting it spun all the mud off into my face um but there was a lot of mud caught there and we're not particularly on a really really muddy trail but that is getting, that's what the rubbing noise is there. Um, but there was a leaf stuck inside here. One thing to note is if you want to get inside to the hub for easier access to the valve, um, you've got these little side panels. I don't want to damage it too much, but you can see here. You just pull those up and then you've got, oh, I can hear the leaf again. Where are you? Where are you? But you can get to the valve a lot easier. It's just as simple as that. A great design. Ah, that's much, much better. No noise now. Leaves. There are the nemesis of uh, electric unicycles getting stuck inside the casing. Now I'm on some of the rougher stuff, the gravel. Okay, I've done nine miles and it's saying 28% battery remaining. So it's handling gravel absolutely fine. No issue at all. Trundling along. Uh, so it comes as standard with the maximum speed 16 miles an hour. You can adjust this in the app through the second window within the application once you're looking at the speed area. Um, and you can slide this across, but you get this message come up. Hopefully I remember to overlay it. 
and that basically stops you from turning it up. Um, but I think if you just say agree to that, it still shows 16 and it shows it as its maximum on the slider, but I got it up to 17.5 miles an hour and then the alarm kicked in. Um, so I need to re-look at that. Okay, and yes, I've just logged out, killed the app and restarted it, logged back in and it's now showing 19 miles an hour. It's set to 19. So you can override that. It does recommend you ride it for a year, which I think is a very sensible message to bring up because um, it's just silly adjusting it straight away. If you've never ridden one and all your riding time is limited, don't just come along and whack it up to 19 because not ideal. Um, so that's the upper limit, 19 miles an hour where it cuts in. The app connects flawlessly every time I boot this machine up or I go away from my phone and I ride back to it again, it's reconnecting, no trouble at all. Um, apart from that bit buggy with the slider, I had to kill the app. Um, oh, cattle grid, throwing my life into the... Oh dear, didn't feel the most comfortable. <laughs> Did it though, but that wasn't overly comfortable. We find with the 18 inch wheels, this being a 16, with the 18 inch, um, it's, you don't really feel it. With the 16 inch, it's like... So yeah, right, we're gonna have a lovely view here. Look at that, beautiful, River Seven. So I'm finding with that mach machine set at 19 on the slider, I'm getting 17.6 with a 27% battery. So maybe it's battery related, but I'm not getting 19. Um, it's actually given a readout of 17.6. Um, the actual app tracking the average speed cannot be right because it's saying just short of 20 miles an hour, average speed. So that's not right. Um, so anyway, I'm getting 17.6 out of this. Okay, I've just done 10 miles and the battery says 22% remaining. So, hmm, not sure what I'm gonna get out of this, but it looks about 12, 13 miles. Okay, just done 11 miles and it says 32% on the battery. Uh, so the battery's gone up slightly. So we shall keep on pushing. Bit more of a muddy area now to test out. Not ridiculously muddy, I am not gonna wreck this. It's such a beautiful machine. It's a nice looking piece of kit. I don't want to come off it and scratch it all up. Um, but I did speak to uh, an owner of one of these. He said when it gets scratched, you just buff it out. So apparently, so I will believe him on that one. Oof. But she's handling lovely at the moment. And I was really just waiting for the final range to see what I get out of it. But other than that, it's handling really, really nicely. So the running sound of this, it's nice and quiet. There's no massive hum coming out of it. It rides really, really nicely. And I mean, the question is, I suppose, where does this sit? Why would you buy this over any other model? And it sits in the middle of the range, essentially. So you've got a 16 inch wheel, which is not the biggest, and it's far from the smallest. So you could go, the most common is 14 inch or 16 inch. Um, so the 9.1 S2 from comparison is uh, a bit lighter machine, doesn't go as far, it's not as powerful. That's a 14 inch wheel. And so the bigger the wheel diameter goes, the more comfortable it gets off-road for one and for trundling along long distances on road. Um, it's, it's heavier and it's better planted and it just sits nicer. Um, so the 16 inch, really, really good size. It's almost like the standard, I suppose, the standard size. Um, what you've got this with this though is the extra power. So the, the upper speed there set at 19, which I haven't achieved to be fair. Um, 17 and a half miles an hour, that is plenty fast enough. I mean, if you come off at that sort of speed, you know, you get into speed where you need to be wearing protective kit, wrist guards, knee guards, elbow guards, helmet, um, at those sort of speeds. So if you want to go 
quicker than lower models than this. So you need that speed and you need the comfort of a slightly bigger wheel, 16 inch, um, then this is most likely to be for you. I mean, with the added benefit is the quality of this build is exceptional. It's very, very well finished. Uh, nothing creaks. Um, it's just really, really nicely done. The app works well. Uh, it's got rubber covers on here. I mean, you've got a rubber on and off switch. It's none of the, the cheaper switches. It's just finished very, very well. And it's such a nice, solid build. And with the headlight actually built into the front of the unit as well, that functionality is really critical, especially, say, in the UK in winter. It gets dark half three, four o'clock. Um, you know, that makes a massive difference rather than having to remember to bring a torch with you. Um, so things like that. The functionality of this is all built in. Trolley handle, light, uh, Bluetooth functionality. It's smooth, it's built well, and it's, it's quick enough for what you would need. Now, if you need to go much faster, then obviously you've got things like King Song and Gotway. Their bigger models will go, they will eat this. I mean, you'll do, the Monster will do 28 miles an hour. Uh, this, you know, this is maxing out 18 miles an hour for me and my weight. So huge difference there. But there is, I can tell you now from experience and doing a thousand miles on the Gotways, with Gotways, it's essentially like a sports car. And what comes with sports car? Higher maintenance or more issues. So people don't tend to drive to work in Ferraris. They will use them on a weekend and they will use them just for fun, for the thrill. If you want something that's gonna be commuting every single day and doing huge amount of mileage, but with hardly any issues, then something like this is gonna be the one. Uh, the more you stress components by going higher speed, the hotter they get um, and the more uncertain things become. That being said, <laughs> done thousands of miles on Gotways. Um, but something like this, like the 9Bot, I find the 9Bot 1E Plus is an absolute gem. Um, it's just a great all-rounder. It's like a proper bruiser. It, it runs real well, but it just lacks that, that top end, <laughs> which is what this brings. Same size wheel, and this brings a style as well. I mean, this thing is a pretty wheel. Um, so they've done a really good job on that. So you've got the choice. I mean, if you're looking at this and thinking, you know, do I go that or do I go Gotway? Hopefully that little insight will give you an idea of which one you should be looking for. I would I would use this to travel to work. I mean, you're talking five and a half, six miles to work. I would use that every day, I think. If I, if someone was to ask me, would you actually ride to work on this? 9.1 S2, I would not travel six miles to work on it. One, because half of it's off-road. It's not that comfortable off-road. Um, and you have to charge it definitely when you get there. Well, this will take me there and back. Um, and it's going to be reliable. It's going to be solid. Um, but yeah, if I wanted to go real quick, then the Gotway is the way to go. But that's exceedingly quick and at that speed really it's a bit like riding a motorcycle it seems like a good idea but then you spend 15 minutes putting your equipment on to actually go out so if you just want to jump on it ride it at a safe speed um yeah this is the one actually slightly see through you can see i don't know if you can see that on the camera but that actually is a cable in there it's, it's slightly transparent there's a smoked finish on this you can kind of see in um it does get all the dust on it so it picks up dust quite quickly so i might have to put some anti-static stuff on that um, you can turn the lights off from in the app as well. Anyway, that's enough of me talking. I hope that gives you some food for thought.
So the foot plates have got good clearance on them as well. So I can lean it in quite a bit. I'm not going to scuff in the ground. So that's a good little height on that and it feels stable at that height as well. So worth noting that the mud guard protection is like that front and back. So you don't get a spray of mud up all up your trouser legs. So that's pretty neat at the time. It's all encased. Okay, I've done 13 and a half miles. That's where I'm at. Oh, I think I might be walking quite some way. So it's now tilting completely back, as you can see. That's unrideable. Um, that was the, apart from the indication on here, which is obviously saying low battery, that was the only warning. It just said low battery and then did that instantaneously. I was kind of hoping there would be a bit of a reserve in there. Um, but no, it's just, it's just gone low battery and that's my lot. So I need to turn that off. Uh, let's see if I can get to say low battery again for you guys. I've got quite a substantial way to go, to be fair. Oh, it's tilting really far forward now. Oh, it's actually trying to throw me off, yeah. Um, it's just tilting massively forward. Um, right, let me have a look at the, uh, let me have a look at the mileage I've done. I have done 14 miles. So there you go, there's the answer. That was multi-terrain distance test. The temperature today is about 18, 19 C. Um, so that is what I've got. And that's a good tire pressure, so it's close to the max. Um, my rider weight is about 13 and a half stone. Look it up for those who don't use stone. So I need to find a way of getting home. It's quite a long walk. It's probably about two miles. <laughs> ah, the things I do for you. So I've just booted it back up, which is what you should definitely shouldn't do. And I'm going really, really slowly. Um, see if I can record where it just says low battery, and then that's it. Uh, but it showed the battery was showing as about 13 percent 14 when i booted it back up immediately went down to 13. um so yeah i'm just taking it really really steady doing this beats walking up this uh walking up this hill with it put it that way but when this happens it's definitely not what you should do at all when it says it's gone it's gone you should get it charged up but i know what everyone's like you're gonna do what i'm doing which is <laughs> trying to eke every title bit out of it um, but you shouldn't do it. It's naughty. It's now showing a 5% battery in the app. So I'm going to take it really, really steady. See where it gets me. Trouble, I should imagine. Okay, she's gone again. But it got me up that hill. Well, some of the way up the hill. Let me just power it down. Turn it off. Do that. Car handy little handle but unfortunately to use this you need power so I'll wait a couple of minutes and then it might just give me back enough power to press a button and push it along official distance 14.15 miles so 14 miles and a walk in the forest time to lose some weight so I've booted it back up and now I can push it